Hey, what's up guys? Um, today I'm going to be showing you how, um, well, how to start a GUI in Java. Now, a GUI, or GUI, stands for Graphical User Interface, and what that means is it's pretty much any content that pops up on your screen that's visual. So, for example, Minecraft uses a GUI. When you launch the game, you see a Java GUI pop up, since it's coded in Java, of course. Um, RuneScape uses it too, um, and tons and tons of other games, programs, etc. You will use a GUI. Actually, Eclipse is just one giant GUI too, by the way, if anyone was wondering. Um, so I know I have already taught you how to draw graphics onto a screen, um, and that's different from what we're doing. That was the graphics class. Um, this is actually the um, swing import. So Swing is a type of class which allows you to make GUIs with buttons, panels, labels, um, sliders, text fields, tons of things for customizable options, and all around it's definitely a better class than the graphics class for GUI. Um, so I think you're really going to enjoy it, and let's get started. So. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have two classes here. I have my main class, of course, and then I have my display class. Now, you may be wondering what's different about this display class, and that is the fact that we are using a different type of method here. Normally we'd have a method that's like public, static, void, or something along the lines of that, but here, no, we just have public display. And that's because this is a constructor. A constructor is a is a weird type of um, method, and I'm not going to get into explaining what a constructor is right now, but just remember that this constructor will allow us to pretty much work work with our GUI really well. Um, so let's get started. So I'm going to start, of course, by importing some things. So let's import these. Now I'm not going to type them out because that would take a little while, and I'm lazy and I will put all this code on paste bin so if you want to paste the imports you can do that too so I'm just gonna paste them and I'll explain what these mean so um, Java X dot swing will allow us to work with um, pretty much any items that pop up on our GUI so we have a if you notice here we have J button J label J panel so you know button label panel um, and there's so many more. There's, you know, like slide field, sliders, and text fields, stuff like that. And then we have j uh, java.awt.dimension, and that's pretty much, um, well, it lets us work with the sizing of our panel, or GUI. So once we've done that, let's create two variables. We're going to create them in right underneath our class, because, well, we're going to be working um, it's just better organization. So let's create a private variable. Now what a private variable is, is it means only um, what's it called? Only only other methods within this class can access it. Methods from other classes cannot mess with it. So it actually takes up less memory and it's um, better if you're working with a wide scale program. So let's create a private button and label. So to create a button, we do private j button, and then it we name this button print. Then we're going to make another one, so a private j label, and we're going to name this label. So now we've created two variables. So before we do anything else, I'm going to do one more thing here. Now I know I'm teaching you a ton in this tutorial. Um, I normally teach you like one or two things, but I'm going to be putting in a lot of new stuff in this one. So what I'm going to be doing is adding the term extends inside our class. So let's do extends j panel. So what this means is, well let me explain what j panel is. J panel is actually a class, um, just like our class, and j panel lets us use tons of terms that we wouldn't be able to use um, in regular our regular class for example add is a term we're going to be using so you may be wondering so what's so important about extends well extends pretty much means add on to our class so if you imagine this is our class right here public class display 
and think of jpanel as just all this code but added to the end of it. So here's where our content goes and then below it jpanel's content will go right beneath. So it pretty much lets us put in all this code without actually coding anything, which is pretty sweet. So in display, we're going to um, set some content for these. So let's set what our J button will say. So we do print equals new J button, and then we tell it what our J button wants to say. So what we're doing here is we're setting print equal to our J button so that's honestly all that means um, and then in these parentheses we type what we want our J button to display so I want it to display print so um, let me explain actually what we're doing here so we're gonna create a little GUI not very big and this GUI will have two things in it it'll have a button the button will say print and below it it'll have a label and this label will say hit this button to print to the console now we're not going to print to the console I'll do that in the next tutorial but we're just going to be creating these so we can work with them in the next tutorial. So, since we've done that, now we can work with a label. Just pretty much the same way we do label equals new J label, and then we set what our label should say. So let's have it say, hit this button to print to the console. I am really bad at typing today. Console. Okay. So now we've created our our button and our label. Now let's do one more thing. Let's do set preferred size and set layout. So the way we do that is we do set preferred size new dimension. Now I know I'm typing a lot and I'll explain it in a second. So new dimension 245 by 136. So you may be wondering what does this mean? Um, there we go, spelled that incorrectly. So what we're doing here is we're setting the size of our GUI. So if we want our GUI to be 245 pixels um, on the x-axis and then on the y-axis 136. So that's pretty much what we're telling the computer. Create a GUI and make it 245 by 136. That's where dimension comes in. That's why I imported dimension up here. So after that we're going to do set layout and we're going to set it equal to null. Now, I don't know if you know this already, but null pretty much means nothing. Um, and set layout, I'll just pretty much say um, what this means is set the layout manager for this container. Now, since we don't have a special layout, we're just going to be using the default one, which we would just say null because we don't want anything. So the layout is pretty much just style-wise what it can look like but we're just going to use the default Java GUI layout. So after that we're going to add our button and our label to the GUI. So the way we do that is actually really simple. We just type add print. So we added our variable print and then we're going to add our label. So what we've done is we've created our button and we've created our label and now we're just adding them quite simply to the GUI. So if we just took these out, it would pretty much say to the computer, okay, great, you've made this button and label, what do you want me to do with them? With here, we can add them later on, right now, we're just going to add them. Then we're going to set the bounds or set the location of our label and our button. So the way we do that is we do print dot set bounds and then we set the location and the size of it. So let me just do this really quickly. It's 70 by 10 by 100 by 25. Now I have not memorized these numbers. Um, I already made this beforehand so I can remember what numbers to use but um, this will explain what it is. Oops. Okay, so here we have what it explains. It says, first we're gonna have the X, so 70, then we're gonna have the Y location, which is 10, the width of the um, button, which is 100, and the height of the button, which is 25. So 70 is our X location, 10 is our Y location, 100 is the width, and 25 is the height. And we're going to do the same exact thing for the label. So we do label 
dot set bounds and we'll do 20 by 45 and then 210 and by 35 so that is all we need to do for this that is all so remember first declare our variables then we set what we want our variables to say or slash do and then we set the size of our um, GUI and the layout of it then we add those variables to the GUI and then we set how big and where they are simple as that just like a five-step process so once we've done that we need to do one more thing let's go to main and let's call these because we can't just create this big GUI and then never call it so the way we call it is a little weird but I'll show you how to do it so first we are going to import something and I have it copied so that you don't have to um, you know wait for me to type it it's javax.swing.jframe so inside our main method we do jframe with an uppercase F and then we'll name this frame and we'll set it equal to a new jframe and what do we want to name this GUI well let's name it my GUI so what we've done is we've created a GUI or a frame in this case and we've named it my GUI now we're going to do frame which is our variable dot set default close operation oh my gosh operation okay and what we're going to do is we're going to set the the close operation to j frame dot exit underscore on underscore close so what we've told the computer here is if I click this little red X at the top right corner of our GUI make sure to close my GUI and end the program so that's honestly all this does is it pretty much says when you click the red X close me and then we're gonna do frame dot get content pane dot add new display so content uh, oops let's see what I'm missing cannot be resolved to a variable oh okay yeah make sure to put parentheses after that display so let me explain what's going on here so content plane is pane is a little weird to explain um, content pane is pretty much the main window or pane of where all your buttons your labels and everything will be drawn so that pretty much means what do you want me to draw because I can't just draw nothing so we tell it this is what you're going to draw you're going to dis you're going to draw uh, this display class it's this display constructor so that's all it's doing is telling it what to draw then we do frame dot pack and what this pretty much means is it sizes the window um, it sizes the window in a certain way I don't really know how to explain it but I don't, I, to be honest I don't even know I would use it very much but just remember to do frame dot pack and then one last thing frame dot set visible and we'll set that equal to true because we can't just create a frame and then have it be invisible we need to tell it um, to actually render to show up on the screen so that's pretty much what that means you could actually set it to false if you wanted to if you don't want your GUI to pop up I mean I don't know why you would do that right now but the only reason this is here is because some people don't want their GUI to show up until certain times um, but just make sure to set this to true so if we save this and we save this we shouldn't have any errors and let's run the program okay here we go so it's created a little GUI called my GUI which we named up here and it has a button which is print and it has a label that says hit this button to print to the console and if we click this little X up here and the only reason it's not red is because I'm using a special theme on Windows if we click this little red X for you guys up here it closes it simple as that now that's honestly all there is to this and I will see you in the next tutorial when we actually make these buttons do something see you later